Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Invest for More, and we are outside a house flip I just sold. Now, we're here for a couple of reasons. One, Zillow just announced they're going to stop buying houses with their iBuyer program. And this is a house we had actually tried to get Zillow to give us a price on before we ended up selling it ourselves. And we also got an offer from Open Door, which is another company that buys houses directly from sellers. So I wanted to do a video after I sold this house to show you how much we sold it for, minus fees, all that, compared to what these other iBuyers, online buyers would pay. So we're going to go through that, show you some of that, show you some other properties that are currently for sale by both of those companies and see if they're making any money. And then the other reason we're here is this is a property where the contractor filed a lien against me. And we're going to talk about that a little bit, how that happened. It was a contractor who was hired by another contractor who was working on this house who we actually fired. So it's quite the story. We did sell this house without paying the lien. So we'll talk about that. And of course, check out investormore.com for much more information on our flips, rentals, being an agent, all of that great stuff as well. We have lots of free articles and we have many books on Amazon as well. If you really want to get in-depth into real estate investing, we love the likes, love seeing new subscribers. So we're going to show you some of the before and after video while we go through all the different things that happened, show you some of the offers, different things, and talk about this lien. So this is the house when we first bought it. Uh, we paid 230000 for it. It was a beautiful green color, as you can see from the after video. We did not keep that color. Uh, it was a mess. Lots of animals, lots of cats, lots of dogs there. So it took quite a bit of work. And we ended up selling it for $392,000. Um, we actually had it under contract for 400,000, but the appraisal came in a little bit low. Uh, the buyers came up a little bit. We came down a little bit and ended up at 392,000, um, for repairs and carrying costs, all that. I don't have the exact numbers yet, but I'm thinking we spent probably around 50,000 repairs, maybe a little more because we had some contractor issues, probably about 35, 40,000 other costs for real estate commissions, financing costs, carrying costs, all of that too. And you can see what the house looks like here when we first bought it. So what happened with this contractor first? <laughs> so we hired uh, some contractors to work in the house. We'd used them before we started with some small projects like we always do. And then we uh, moved on to bigger and bigger projects. This would have been their biggest project. They bid it, they went to work on it and they started out okay, but then they just got super duper slow. They weren't there. They weren't working. And it turned out that contractor had bought like a concrete company and had some other jobs going. He just spread himself way too thin. And eventually they ran out of money to do this job. They literally bid the job, got paid more than their bid because we were trying to help them out and get them going and said they couldn't keep going unless they got even more money because they just couldn't pay their guys. And so we said, okay, that's fine. You're done. We'll bring in uh, other contractors crew to finish it. So we cut ties with them, moved on and have not worked with them since, but we have heard they weren't um, rethinking that strategy later on. So they also hired another person to work on this house and do some work on it. And this person has been crazy. So I talked about it in a, a video before, but um, basically he worked for two days for them and part of a third day. They agreed to pay him $200 a day. And so they said, okay, we'll pay you $425 because you work two days and a little bit of the third day. He said, nope, I want paid $600 because you guys caused me not to be able to work a full third day. Even though I didn't work the third day, I still want paid $600. They got in a big fight over it. They refused to pay him $600. He wanted $600. So he refused to take any money and then called me like the next day saying, I'm going to file a lien against the house. Your contractors are just calling everybody names and going crazy. And I'm like, what's going on? Why is the first thing you're telling me like that you're filing a lien against us without even like discussing the situation? And he told me this, the situation and I said, okay, I'll talk to my contractor. We talked about it and just nonstop harassment from that point saying he needed his money, saying he's filing a lien, saying he's going to um, file complaints uh, with the real estate commission against me, um, just constant things, literally over $175 difference in the work he thought he should be paid for that he didn't do and the work he actually did. So eventually he did file a lien. He filed a lien with the county. It never should have been accepted by the county, but it was because it's filed wrong a number of different ways. Um, and liens last about six months in Colorado. So, um, that's part of the issue. 
the other issue is he just kept bugging us over and over and over again. So we've never had a contractor file a lien against us before. After 217 sold flips or something like that, a bunch of rental property rehabs, never had a contractor file a lien against us. We've always paid our guys, always paid them. And if this guy would have worked with us, talked with us, been cool about it, yeah, we would have figured something out and got it strained out. But he was just a jerk from the very beginning. And then it became almost like, okay, we'd rather pay lawyers than pay you. So we have not paid the lien. We never paid the lien. We sold the house and that lien is still not paid. So um, that brought a smile to my face that we were able to do that. We will probably talk about that more later on in another video because I'm sure there'll be more going on with this lien situation. This contractor has threatened to take me to court. Like I said, he claimed he had um, voicemails from the other contractors threatening him. He claimed he filed police reports against them. He claimed he had all this stuff that we were hiding mold. He claimed just lie after lie after lie. And he's like, I've got proof. I've got pictures I'll send them to you. I've got voicemails I'll send them to you. I asked him many times to send me this stuff. Never once could he send it to me. Now he's literally on my Facebook page saying he's got the same stuff against me and he'll send it to people. He doesn't because it never happened. He's he, That's just his way of uh, trying to make people look bad. So um, he hasn't been paid yet. We don't plan on paying him for that lien. We didn't hire him. He's hired by someone else. They agreed to pay him for the work he did. He didn't want it. So as far as we're concerned, that was his fault for messing all of that up and destroying um, his reputation in the process too, because a lot of other house flippers and people follow my page, know me, follow my YouTube channel, and um, we're not shy to show who he is because he's left reviews on Facebook for our business as well. And the buyers who bought this property saw those and were concerned, like, oh, do you not pay your contractors? We told them about it, showed them some of his other comments, like, oh, he's kind of crazy. So <laughs> it was okay. So that's the contractor issue. All right, so moving on to Zillow. Open door. There's some other companies that are called iBuyers who buy properties directly from sellers. So I thought I would get an offer from some of these companies just to see how much they'd pay because I, I keep hearing people are selling their houses for crazy amounts to these companies and it doesn't make any sense. And I wanted to check it out for myself. So I first tried Zillow. Zillow um, was buying properties at the time. I put in the address and Zillow said, nope, sorry, we don't buy properties in that area. So a little disappointed that didn't work out, but um, it turns out Zillow was only buying in about 25 market areas. I put in quite a few other addresses for properties we have. They wouldn't buy any of them. However, there are some properties um, pretty close to us in other areas that they have bought and are for sale right now that we'll show you here in a little bit. Um, but then we also were able to talk to Open Door, which is another company that's been around even longer, even larger than Zillow as far as buying houses. They're not a bigger company, but their um, house buying process is bigger. And here you can see the after video of the house too. Um, the yard was not mowed at this time, which was uh, annoying me, but we got over it. <laughs> um, so anyway, Open Door, we were able to talk to them. They said, yes, we do do offers in your area. And um, we went through the process where I submit all kinds of information, send them pictures, talk about the property, and they gave me a preliminary offer. And then um, after that, they're like, okay, we need you to walk through the house with our people or send us a video. So I went through, did a video, sent it to them. And then they actually sent a person out to the house to view the exterior of it. They didn't go inside. Um, but they sent a person out to make sure it's still there, look at the exterior, check it out and they gave us an offer. So they gave me a preliminary offer before viewing it, and then they gave me another offer after they saw it. Now, you would think as nice as this house is that you can see, it was completely remodeled, new paint, new doors, new hardware, new exterior paint. Um, I believe the windows were already new on this one. We didn't have to do that, but new kitchen, new baths. Um, their preliminary offer, you'd think, would be right in line or maybe lower than what their you know offer was after seeing the house. And in fact, it wasn't. So their second offer was lower. So it makes me wonder if they always do that, if they always have a lower second offer or who knows what. But um, based on the condition of this property, it being one of the nicer ones in the area neighborhood, um, I would think their offer would be higher. But anyway, we'll show you those offers. We'll show you some other properties and some other cool stuff um, that came out of this iBuyer experience. Now, first we're gonna talk about um, Zillow a little bit while you continue to look at that property. A lot of people, have said, oh, 
Zillow stopped buying houses. They see a crash coming. The real estate market's going to be, you know, just decimated really soon because Zillow is seeing the future and knows that's why they're getting out of the business. I could not disagree with that more. And we'll show you that too with some of the houses they're buying. <laughs> um, Zillow from the very beginning when they first started buying houses uh, is not very good at it to be blunt. So we've flipped houses for many, many years, done over 200 flips. And the main purpose of flipping houses is to sell them for more than you bought them for. And I don't think Zillow ever got that memo or that message. They literally were selling houses for less than what they bought them for. Even after you factor in the fees they paid, some repair contingencies and different things there, then they had all the fees to sell them, financing costs, carrying costs, they were repairing some of the properties. They were losing so much money um, by having this house flipping business. So I don't know why exactly they're doing it. They're just trying to drive up revenue because a lot of these big um, companies will just focus on revenue, 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 whether they're making money or not. And that they feel that will drive their stock price up. Then eventually they'll figure out how to profit later on. But, um, I think they realized, Hey, we're kind of in over our heads. We have too many properties right now. We don't really know how to repair them. We don't really know how to sell them. We aren't buying them at the right price. And they decided to stop for now. So I think it wasn't the fact that they thought the market was crashing It's the fact that they're losing money and losing money is usually not a good way to do business. So that's my opinion on Zillow. I don't think they're trying to take over the real estate world or that they're doing that because they see a crash coming. I think they just realized it was a poor business model and they needed to do something else. And I think overall, I think Zillow bought 3,800 homes in the second quarter of 2021 across the whole country. That's not a very big portion of the market. So, so they weren't buying tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of homes, which would need to be done to control the market and change things. And that would take billions and billions or trillions of dollars to do that. So I don't think they had the money to do that either. Um, and open door, like I said, is actually bigger than them. And I think they're paying less money. They still might be losing money, but maybe not losing quite as much money <laughs> as Zillow. So um, we'll show you some of this process and that here um, coming up real soon, as soon as we finish with the end of this after video. And yeah, I had a few shots of the before and this after one that um, I forgot to take out. So I apologize for that, but it should be okay. But yeah, finished the basement. Um, everything turned out pretty cool in this house. And yeah, we sold it for 392 had closing costs that we had to pay had um oh look at that spider <laughs> some financing costs carrying costs all of that as well and things that zillow would have too when selling houses or open door would have when selling houses and those really have to be factored in when you consider the prices they were paying so here we have zillow and like i said i tried to submit you know, an offer from them submitted my address and basically what they kept telling me was sorry we don't service that address. And then I went to OfferPad, which you can see right here. I tried to do the same thing. And what they had me do is go through all of this information. I sped this up like 800 times, entered everything I could about the house. I'd already entered the address. And then eventually they came back and said, okay, um, we'll get back to you here shortly with an offer. And can you guess what they told me? We're sorry, we don't service that area either. So then I came through to open door and this is open door and all this information again too. So then I was getting kind of frustrated, like, Oh my gosh, is this going to happen again? But I know all the information and then there's my offer. They're going to offer me $363,000 for this property. However, there is a catch to that. So, um, here they want me to schedule my exterior assessment and submit a video before they'd give me my final offer. And so entered my information. I did not put my phone number there. Don't worry. I'm not going to show it to you. <laughs> and then, um, we would get my final offer, which I thought would be more because after showing the video, after showing the exterior, the house is completely redone, completely remodeled. And you would think, um, right. My offer would be pretty good. So then I came back here, did all this uh, like a week later to come get my offer. And what would it be? It would be. Oh, we're waiting. It's so suspenseful. 352,000. So it came in lower. And then you can also see they have a 5% service charge. They're saying it needs $3,800 in repairs and there's $2,100 in closing costs. So really 
my net proceeds are three hundred and twenty nine thousand dollars if I sold this property to offer pad. So or open door. Sorry, I'm ah, getting all these <laughs> confused to open door. So it's an okay deal. Um, but I obviously would make a lot more money selling it myself since I sold it for 392,000 without doing any more repairs. And here you can see, this is if you were a regular person, not me, you'd probably have about 1500 in title insurance, $22,000 in commissions, a thousand dollars in closing fees. And I even threw in there $3,000 to prepare the house, clean it, stage it, maybe make a few repairs. You'd end up with 364,500 net to seller. If you would have listed this house on the MLS and sold it through real estate agents. Now we have the properties that Zillow is buying. <laughs> this is one around us. Um, we can tell that Zillow buys them because if you scroll down and look at the real estate agent, it shows it as um, Zillow. And we'll show that in another one coming up here soon. But here you can see the crazy price that they're listing for and paying. So it's listed for 596. They keep lowering the price, keep lowering the price. It's kind of interesting what the house sold for a long, long time ago, but they're down to 544. So what did they pay for this house? They paid 596. So they paid way more than they're selling it for. And a lot of people say, oh, that's because of all the fees, but we'll show you that later. That may not be the case. Here we have another house that was listed. And the reason I can tell it's an open door property is because it's listed by open door brokerage. So very easy to see. And um, they had listed it for $381,000, been for sale for 30 days, has not sold. So um, you can kind of go through the pictures a little bit here and see that um, it's okay. I guess they, they staged the homes but it looks like my yard <laughs> and maybe they put in some carpet. So they did do maybe a little bit of work. It's hard to know what condition it was in when they bought it. Um, I guess that's new carpet it looked kind of dirty at first, but it's okay. Not in horrible shape. Uh, but then we go back here and what we can do is look at public records and see there's open door as the owner. This is all public information. It's not private and see that they paid 351,000 for it on 8-16-21, a couple months ago. And now, like we just showed, they're trying to sell it for 381. So they're not gonna make any money. If they make repairs, even with the fees they're paying, the carrying costs and staging, they're probably gonna break even on that property, maybe. But that's better than losing money. So. We can go to the next one, and this is Zillow, we can tell. Go down here, Zillow Homes is a listing office. And this one's more interesting. Here we can pop out some of the pictures here too. And we can see it's not staged. Laminate counters, so they, did they do anything? Did they put carpet in? Maybe, maybe they did carpet. Doesn't look like they painted. Doesn't like they did, did much of anything here. Um, very green grass though. It's extremely green. <laughs> so then we can come back here and see what did they pay? They paid 330. Nope. That's not the right one. Okay. So the MLS didn't show it, but we went to the assessor page to see if that shows it. And we can see here, scroll down to recorded documents. There we go. Zillow paid $561,000 for it in July and $569,000. And then you can see they tried to sell it for 603, lowered the price, lowered the price. And then it finally went under contract here when they lowered the price for the second time. So they're barely, barely, barely making any money at all. And then some people might say, yeah, but they're charging all these fees and they have repair fees and they're making their money in that way. And I looked that up and Zillow says they charge a 5% fee like open door does. But then I posted some of this stuff on my Instagram page and actually had people coming on my page commenting who had sold their house to Zillow. And they had some really interesting things to say was fortunate to sell a property to them before they stopped buying 1% closing fee, 
1% fee, no maintenance, and they resold for the same price we sold it to them for. They're, not, they're losing money. This is why Zillow stopped buying houses, because they are literally losing money. Um, and then oh, just craziness going on out there. And it's not because they see a housing crash coming. It's because they're losing money. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching the video. I think I've taken up enough of your time with this one already. Hope you guys enjoy it. Love to hear what you think. Love to see your comment. Love it, love it when you hit that like button too or subscribe. That helps us out a lot. And then we'll have many more videos coming up of our flips, rentals, advice videos, all of that. So hopefully you subscribe and catch those when they come up here coming up soon. Thanks again, and we'll be back.